Hi, I'm Joanna Sanchez, and I am the program director and the author and the owner of Botanica, and I partner with the Southwest Institute of Healing Arts. And today we are in the kitchen, our wonderful kitchen, to have some uh, demonstration about using herbal remedies. Today, my goal is to give some clarity on a couple of herbal remedy delivery systems or preparation methods that often I see cause confusion. And these are tonics and elixirs. So an elixir is a herbal remedy that is sweetened. And so because it is so sweet, it may not be something that you want to take on an ongoing basis for therapeutic purposes. However, these flavored liquid preparations called elixirs can be so nourishing and promoting in terms of our health and well-being. So I have brought you an example of an elixir that I have made. So this elixir was made first with a tea, and the tea is of dried mullein leaves. Secondly, I had fresh elder leaves and fruit, and I combined them together to make another water extract, another strong tea. And lastly, I took the new growth of some beautiful spruce trees from the mountains here in Arizona and added honey to it. So there's the sweetener. In order for this elect elixir, to remain uh, stable and not go bad over a period of time, it also has some liqueur in it. And the liqueur that I use is Contro, a very fine brandy with an orange flavor. So this, this wonderful elixir has the flavors of the wild elder, and which is a very good antiviral, the wild mullen, which is very good for the respiratory system, and it also has the uh, spruce, which is antibacterial. So it's a very good respiratory elixir that tastes wonderful. Again, though, elixirs are sweetened, and so they're not the remedy that you want to use all the time. But we can also employ tonics in herbal medicine. And today I'm going to demonstrate a tonic that you can make that would be more appropriate long term because there is no sweetener in it. It would be something you'd have to make all the time because there's also no alcohol in it. So I will begin by telling you the ingredients that I've used. So the first two things I did is make herbal waters. There are a host of herbs that you can use for these kinds of tonics. Be creative with your own ingredients. But the ones that I have here today are poleo. Poleo is a wild mint from the uh, riparian or river areas of the mountains of Arizona. It is the only native mint in, the, in North America. And we are, it's so special that it grows here. So mints are good digestive herbs. And so I have made a water of the mint, of the wild mint, and that's where I will begin to make this tonic. I'm going to pour a little bit of the wild mint. And normally mint teas are very dark, but because this is fresh, it has very little color, but it has a very big aroma from all of the volatile oils in the peppermint, which are good for our digestive system. So I'm gonna pour a little bit into each of these two glasses, one for me and one for you. And then next I have another herbal water. And this herbal water is from hibiscus. So this comes from our garden, not from a wild place like the wild mint. So we grow this hibiscus sabdorifer in our medicine garden here, and the herbal students all work in the, in the medicine garden. So this beautiful red pigment is very high in vitamin C, and it also, this, uh, the hibiscus, and locally we call it hamica. The Hispanic people have uh, really brought the knowledge of how to use the hibiscus to us here at our herb school. And so this is very high in vitamin C and it's also what we call a refrigerant. So I'm going to pour a little bit of this herbal water also into our tonic today. Isn't it beautiful? That bright red color. But if you're hot and sweaty and getting tired of hot weather, then this is a beautiful herbal water to add to your tonic. So 
there we have two of our herbal waters. I just wanted to share what the hibiscus sabdorifa looks like because it is not the ornamental hibiscus. This is the only edible uh, fruit of uh, the hibiscus genus. So it's important to use the right kind of hibiscus. There are many things that you can add. For instance, I brought here the fresh hawthorn berries, which are good for our heart. A wonderful thing to do on an ongoing basis as a tonic for our well-being, for our circulatory system. Also here today, I made a rosemary water. So this is a locally grown, beautiful species of the needles of the rosemary. Rosemary uh, has been named in a new way in our botanical language. It is now Salvia rosemarinus. And here I made a water. You can see that I didn't use much rosemary because rosemary is so powerful. So I'm going to add this herbal water to the tonic as well. And rosemary is going to be very good for so many things. The catchphrase of antioxidants bears well with rosemary. It will keep us from getting cancers. It will increase the circulation in our brain. It will help with mild melancholy and depressions. So here we are adding rosemary. And again, it's the oils that don't have any color that are giving, going to give this tonic a wonderful flavor as well as the medicinal qualities of the tonic. And in this jar, I have some very precious juice of prickly pear. So you may be aware of prickly pear cactus and it is the fruit of this plant that is one of the highest sources of vitamin C. And so in the desert, you know, we have lots of palm trees but, and citrus trees, but before they were introduced here, this is the wild native uh, vitamin C that the native peoples used, indigenous people. So this is the last of this season. So preparing the prickly pear fruit is a quite a laborious task, so it's very special that we're getting to add this in to our tonic today. And so now we have all of the medicinal aspects of this tonic. And tonics are safe, and they are enduring, and they can be used for long periods of time. And the definition of a tonic is a remedy that restores the body to tone, and they are meant to be nutritive and supportive to the body. And so then we can flavor and enhance the taste as well as the benefits of the tonic from here. So the next thing that I will add is some juice. And I don't use much juice, but a little bit of juice for flavoring, particularly for people who have not used herbal remedies quite so much. So this is a little bit of blueberry and pomegranate that's going to be added to our tonic. And as you see, I'm not putting very much. Just a little bit to add those wonderful nutritious fruits and a little bit of sweetness, natural sweetness from the fruits. Next, I like to add lime or lemons. So I think we'll add a little bit of fresh lemon and squeeze that into our remedy, to our tonic. And also some 100% lime juice. Can't you tell from all of these wonderful ingredients how delicious this is going to be? I can't wait. And then an addition that I really prefer to use is some tonic water. And this particular one is peach flavor. So that'll add a little bit of uh, nice taste to the beverage. And then lastly, we have a few garnishes to add to this wonderful tonic that we are making. So this, these ice cubes were made from the juice of the Myers lemon, which is a very special lemon that we can grow here in the Sonoran Desert. And it adds a delightful, it's quite unique as a lemon in terms of its flavor, and it adds a delightful um, taste, and of course, again, citrus high in vitamin C. So this is a very nutritive, which is right on target for what we want when we're taking a, a tonic. And the last two things that we'll add to our tonic today is a few sprigs of yerba buena. And that means the good herb. And this is a special species of spearmint. 
We can't wait to drink it. And you can make these tonics at home and you can vary your juices and your foods and your herbal waters and then a regular lemon up here to make it look nice. And there we have it. So the whole idea, the central feature of herbal remedies is to replenish us and to restore us and to nourish us. And this is in true keeping to do these tonics on an ongoing basis to help with our health and our well-being. So I hope you've enjoyed our little uh, recipe making here with tonics and elixirs that you can now use those terms in an educated manner and know the difference. We have our sweetened elixir here with a little bit of alcohol and honey. It'll last six months or so. It is very, very health promoting in terms of a respiratory tonic, if you will, and used, you know, seven, 10 days in a row or maybe for a month on and off again versus our tonics. They can be made ongoing and daily and you can drink them and replenish yourselves and have fun preparing them. So I hope you enjoy. Here's to our health.